I did an initial round of testing with this case for the full review. This is the Q58 and thermally, you know, it was just acceptable, but with a few tweaks, this one can actually get pretty good. Welcome to Machines and More. We're gonna continue taking a look at the Q58 here. Now, I had originally wanted to do this particular segment a little bit earlier, but a couple of other projects came up first. But hey, if you're considering the Lee and Lee Q58 and or you have it already, I think you might find this interesting, especially if you're using an AIO. There are a few changes I did here with the case, and before I show you those changes, let's just quickly revisit the performance. So for a combined CPU and GPU fully loaded usage scenario, of course, this is an extreme test, with uh, something like the 3700X at 90-ish, 95-ish watts, and the EVGA 30XC3, which is a 325 watt card. It's certainly usable at uh, moderate or gaming lows, but it's just not what I would call great. The somewhat balanced out-of-box setup with this AIB card is gonna be setting the radiator fans as top exhaust, venting the bottom half of the case, and an exhausting bottom fan, which as you see is arguably the most serviceable configuration, albeit the CPU is still uh, pretty hammered here by the rad taking in all that exhaust. So let's get to the first problem with the case. You get four quarter panels, two glass, and two vented, but because of the tabs on the glass panels, you can only set the glass ones either all on the top or on the bottom half or all on the same side. And you know, if you saw the first initial review, I, what I really wanted to do was set them up diagonally. Uh, in theory, you can buy mesh side panels for the case, but they're not terribly easy to find. Uh, so at least right now, the easiest thing to do is just get rid of those tabs. You will lose the ability to tighten down the panels with the thumb screw, but I think it's okay. The one risk you do run is if the, it slips free from the magnetic catches and then it hits the surface. Um, and so if you want to put some blue tack or Velcro or something like that, that might help. But I think the magnetic catches actually hold it pretty well. Um, so. One thing I didn't do just yet is to file off the small handle tab, and I would recommend doing that since it does obstruct the front panel a little bit, um, but at least for the testing here, it's perfectly sufficient. A hacksaw will make quick work of those tabs, and I would just tape off the panels to protect them from any work that you're doing, and then file them clean after sawing off the tabs, and you can just peel that tape right back off. So this is how it's set up. What I did was vent the area immediately in front of the GPU and also the top, the motherboard side here. And you can see that uh, it is a diagonal setup with the glass on here and, and on the other, top half of the other side. The rationale here is vent the GPU and instead of creating a makeup air path that involves using the GPU's exhaust on that half, what we'll do is create a channel of cool air intake for the radiator that is more attractive so that the radiator fans can avoid taking in that GPU exhaust. And there is one other stock aspect that is a bit suboptimal. That is the position of the SFX PSU. Now placing glass all on the motherboard side is actually not a terrible setup thermally, but it doesn't work well because your power supply fan is gonna get choked off and it's gonna spin up to max power. It's gonna be super loud. With this diagonal panel setup, about half of the fan would still be covered and it'll work fine but the PSU is still practically flush up against the glass. So what I did was I modded the position of the PSU by making a uh, 3D printed PSU cage. This is more of a half cage as compared to the original, you know, the full cage that extends all the way down. But uh, what it does is uses the same holes, but it uses additional ones uh, at the top position for a secure hold since you don't have the screws all the way at the bottom. And for this bracket, I printed it with holes and tap them to 632. Now the front ones will just use a countersunk screw and the back ones will use a short 632 screw. And what I did was I printed an additional set of holes that the unit does have the option to move uh, up a little more if you're using thinner fans. And in this scenario, I did have to use a lower position because of these T30s. But with a 25 millimeter fan, the upper position would be possible. It's like a centimeter higher. This will give the lower fan a little bit more space if you want. In terms of the vertical position, there's not a significant change, but with this one, I was able to inset it so that it sits about 15 millimeters in from the side panel. And that's enough to let the fan breathe, even if you are completely closing it off with glass on both halves of this side. The PSU cage that I made still has a space at the back if you want to use that space for cables or a two and a half inch SSD. I think the original one just has an excess of 
space here because you really don't need that much. So essentially I'm taking some of that extra room and then shifting it inwards. For the power supply here, I am using the white Cooler Master V850 SFX. It looks really nice here with this white finish, I think. Uh, one last thing I did uh, before throwing it all back together was I shifted the position of the radiator. Now that radiator panel at the top is cut for both 240 and 280 rads, but unlike a lot of rad panels where a 240 has to sit dead center, this one is actually nicely designed because it allows you to bias it to either side. So what I did was move the 240 away from the GPU and closer to this uh, vented panel now. And this is going to further bias the intake air source from that uh, GPU site over to this vented panel and it's going to isolate the GPU's exhaust. With this initial series of changes, let's take a look at the thermal improvement here. All right, and that there is a pretty serious improvement. With those changes, six degrees on the GPU and a whopping 10 degrees on the CPU side. And that is in fact better than the NR200P Max with a glass panel. And whether or not the Mesh NR200P Max is comparable here is subjective, but it does get fairly close. The Q50A is a half mesh, half glass setup, essentially, so that it lands halfway between those two Max setups does make some sense, right? All right, for the next mod, let's go over to the GPU side. If you have a three slot GPU, your card's fans are already gonna be up against the outer perimeter. But if you have a two slot GPU like this card here, there's an additional mod like I did on the Meshlicious. The stock riser cable is screwed down to a set of standoffs that are riveted in place, and those can't be moved easily. However, I wanted to shift the cable out 20 millimeters, so I measured it, and it looked like just one additional hole needed to be drilled, since one of the holes is uh, was close enough to an already present vent hole, and there was enough tolerance on the riser cable slots that we could just place the standoff at that vent. So I just popped in a few M3 standoffs with the new drilled hole and the, that uh, vent hole. The two slot 3080XC3 now sits practically at this vented panel here and that allows it to directly take in the coolest air from outside. Next, it allows more of an air gap at the middle of the case and since this card has a small flow through section that does help the GPU cooler. In addition, since this position also places the card and its exhaust further away from the top radiator, it's gonna take more advantage of that exhaust bottom case fan here. So now that we've optimized the airflow on the GPU side as well, it's a pretty significant benefit all around. And with that, the Q58 is now nipping at the heels of the mesh panel and our 200P Max, which is a bigger case, and also one that is using a 280 rad here. So the combined impact of the mods discussed here is about 10 degrees on this GPU and 12 and a half degrees on the CPU, which it that turns this case from just acceptable thermals to quite good, actually. And the pr other thing this mod does in particular is, you know, I previously wouldn't have met recommended using a Founders Edition car like the 3080 or 3070 FE, since that flow through section, which is important to that card working well, is completely choked off. But now with that air gap in the middle, it's gonna work a lot better. So with that experiment, there are a few lessons learned here that I think I'd like to see in future iterations of this case. Obviously, I think that an all mesh version of the case should be an option on the table, but that's not imperative. I think more important is the freedom to place the panels wherever the user wants, especially if you, you know, and I know it's kind of weird to see just half of this case here, but I think that's one of the selling points of this case too, right? A redesigned PSU cage will also offer a potential improvement. And I think offering a few more holes to allow some up and down movement will be convenient for cable management. If you have clearance at the top and you wanna use it uh, to put a rad and maybe a slim fan at the bottom, I think that's what's gonna allow you to do that. Uh, I think the riser cable though is the easiest potential improvement because I'd love to see just an additional standoff location ready to go. And a lot of users aren't gonna be using that uh, because they have a thicker car, but you know, plenty of users will be able to use that and that will give users the best uh, GPU position to choose from. So I'll do it for this round of testing with Q50A. I'm still gonna be testing air cooling for this case, but uh, I wanted to wrap up this AIO testing first since I figured most of you guys would be liquid cooling, but um, hope you found this helpful. Please give a like, subscribe. Links for some of those components and uh, tools are down below. Thanks for watching.